Good morning. Good morning. Welcome to all of you in the name of our Savior Jesus. Merry Christmas to you. Our service theme for this morning is Christ has come to bring grace and truth. That's really not how it should be for sinful people who live in a sinful world. God should not come to us in grace and truth. He should come to us in judgment. But our God is good. And at Christmas we remember not what we deserve, but what we receive, what our God gives us out of his goodness, and that is grace and truth so that we can know him as a loving God, a God who blesses us and saves us. That's what we'll celebrate here today. Hopefully on your way in you picked up one of your service folders that gives you the order of service for this morning. It tells you that today is a song service. That means no sermon, no preaching, and we will let the songs do the preaching for us. So we have eight hymns that we're going to be singing together, and we will celebrate the beautiful truths that uh, God's people have put together for us in song over the years. So our first hymn for today is hymn number four, Lift Up Your Heads, You Mighty Gates. Before we sing, let's take a few moments for silent prayer and meditation to prepare our hearts for worship. God's blessings.
In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Christ the Savior is born. O come, let us worship him. Sing to the Lord a new song. For he has done marvelous things. He has remembered his love and his faithfulness to the house of Israel. All the ends of the earth have seen the salvation of our God. Shout for joy to the Lord, all the earth. With trumpets and the blast of the ram's horn. The Lord be with you. And also with you. Let us pray. Almighty God, grant that the birth of your one and only Son in the flesh may set us free from our old bondage under the yoke of sin. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. You may be seated. Let's continue with our next hymn. It's hymn number 67, What Child Is This? Our first lesson from God's Word for this morning comes from the Old Testament book of Isaiah, chapter 52, verses 7 through 10. This was a prophecy that was first fulfilled by the return of Israel from captivity in Babylon, but it was a prophecy ultimately fulfilled in the coming of Jesus Christ to this earth. 
All throughout this Advent season, we've waited and watched. And now here at Christmas, we get to rejoice and shout and burst into songs together because our Savior has come to redeem us from all our sins and to buy us out of slavery to death and the devil and to bring us home to our heavenly Zion. On Christmas, we witness how our God has laid bare his holy arm to bring us salvation by coming himself as the baby born in Bethlehem. How beautiful on the mountains are the feet of those who bring good news, who proclaim peace, who bring good tidings, who proclaim salvation, who say to Zion, your God reigns. Listen, your watchmen lift up their voices. Together they shout for joy. When the Lord returns to Zion, they will see it with their own eyes. Burst into songs of joy together, you ruins of Jerusalem. For the Lord has comforted his people. He has redeemed Jerusalem. The Lord will lay bare his holy arm in the sight of all the nations, and all the ends of the earth will see the salvation of our God. This is the word of our Lord. Let's continue now with our next hymn. It's hymn number 50, Once in Royal David City. <laughs> Our second lesson from God's Word for this morning comes from the New Testament book of Hebrews, chapter 1, verses 1 through 9. God himself humbles himself to be born as a helpless child and placed in an animal's feeding trough of all places. How very strange and lowly that is. But see how far our God was willing to go to save us. He who is greater than all the angels, who created the heavens and the earth, who in fact is the exact representation of God's being in this world, he was willing to give up all that for us so that he could provide purification for our sins 
so that he could conquer our wickedness and give us his holiness. This is how God revealed himself to us, not as a fiery, judgmental dictator, but as a child full of gentleness and grace. In the past, God spoke to our forefathers through the prophets at many times and in various ways. But in these last days, he has spoken to us by his Son, whom he appointed heir of all things and through whom he made the universe. The Son is the radiance of God's glory and the exact representation of his being, sustaining all things by his powerful word. After he had provided purification for sins, he sat down at the right hand of the majesty in heaven. So he became as much superior to the angels as the name he has inherited is superior to theirs. For to which of the angels did God ever say, You are my son, today I have become your father. Or again, I will be his father and he will be my son. And again, when God brings his firstborn into the world, he says, let all God's angels worship him. In speaking of the angels, he says, he makes his angels winds, his servants flames of fire. But about the sun, he says, your throne, O God, will last forever and ever, and righteousness will be the scepter of your kingdom. You have loved righteousness and hated wickedness. Therefore, God, your God, has set you above your companions by anointing you with the oil of joy. This is the word of our Lord. Let's continue with our next hymn. It's hymn number 54, Where Shepherds Lately Knelt. respect for the words and works of our Lord, please stand for the gospel lesson. Today's gospel comes from John chapter 1, verses 1 through 14. The Word became flesh 
and made his dwelling among us. God said that what is sinful has no place among what is holy and that no one can see God or be in his presence and live. But in Jesus Christ, we don't see a God of wrath, but a God of grace. We don't see a God who will destroy us in his holiness, but a God who gives us his holiness so that we can live with him for eternity. The God of all the universe came down to us to become one with us so that he could lift us up to himself in heaven. God was with us in Jesus Christ. Through him, God's glory could be seen as he came in grace and truth, in flesh and blood, to give us the right to become children of God. In the beginning was the Word, and the Word was with God, and the Word was God. He was with God in the beginning. Through him all things were made. Without him nothing was made that has been made. In him was life, and that life was the light of men. The light shines in the darkness, but the darkness has not understood it. There came a man who was sent from God. His name was John. He came as a witness to testify concerning that light so that through him all men might believe. He himself was not the light. He came only as a witness to the light. The true light that gives light to every man was coming into the world. He was in the world, and though the world was made through him, the world did not recognize him. He came to that which was his own, but his own did not receive him. Yet to all who received him, to those who believed in his name, he gave the right to become children of God, children born not of natural descent, nor of human decision or a husband's will, but born of God. The word became flesh and made his dwelling among us, we have seen his glory, the glory of the one and only who came from the Father, full of grace and truth. This is the gospel of our Lord. You may be seated, and let's continue now with our next hymn. It's hymn number 35, Of the Father's Love Begotten.
Let's continue now on page six in your service folder with the confession of faith for Christmas Day. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, who sent his Son on Christmas Day to be my Savior. I believe in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, announced by the angels, worshipped by the shepherds, and adored by the wise men, who lived to suffer, die, and rise again, and who has redeemed me from sin, death, and the power of the devil. I believe in the Holy Spirit, who has brought me to faith in the Christ of Christmas, who continues to work in my heart through his gracious gospel of a Savior born for me, and who leads me to lay before the feet of my Lord the treasures of my love, and to live under him as my King, both now and forevermore. Amen. Let's continue now by bringing our thank offerings to our Lord. I ask that while the offering is being collected, please sign the friendship registers located at the ends of your pews, then rip out the sheets and put them on top of the booklets when you're done. Thank you. Let's continue now with our next hymn. It's hymn number 56, Gentle Mary Laid Her Child.
Please stand. Let's continue now with the prayer of the church and then the Lord's Prayer, which you can find on page 7 in your service folder. Lord God, Heavenly Father, Creator and Sustainer of the universe, we praise You for the special love You have shown us, Your fallen and sinful creatures. You have kept Your Word and sent Your Son to be born as the promised Savior and Redeemer. Lord Jesus Christ, we marvel at Your servant-like heart, which moved us to do Your Father's will and take on our flesh. You became fully human at just the right time, so that you might live the holy and perfect life we could not live, endure the agony of the cross, and suffer death as our substitute. O Holy Spirit, we thank you for your saving work of bringing us to faith in our newborn Savior. You have opened our eyes to see that, despite his humble appearance and lowly circumstances, this child who lies in Bethlehem's manger is the mighty God, the Redeemer of the world. God of our salvation, as you have brought us to faith in the Christ child, so we ask that you would work powerfully also in the hearts of those who do not yet know him or who do not know him in truth. Grant that the world's attention to the Christ child may not be only a seasonal attraction or a sentimental novelty. Rather, bring sinners to faith that they may see him as the answer to life's problems here and the sure hope of life eternal in heaven with you. And hear us, Lord, as we bring you our private petitions. Let the joyous message of Christmas be preached in all the world, And may it find ready acceptance in believing hearts for the eternal benefit of lost souls, for the extension of your kingdom, and for the glory of your holy name. Amen. We join in the prayer you taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread. And forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. You may be seated. Let's continue with our next hymn. It's hymn number 68, Away in a Manger.
Please stand for the closing prayer. Gracious Father in heaven, on this holy day we rejoice to hear the good news of great joy that a Savior has been born for us. For fulfilling your prophecies and in the fullness of time sending your Son to be one of us in order to redeem us, we give you our heartfelt thanks and praise. Help us to always believe and marvel that this precious child was born to be our substitute, our sacrifice, and our Savior. May we, like the angels, always live to sing your praises, and may we, like the shepherds, take advantage of whatever opportunities we have to share the good news of a Savior born for all the world. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face shine on you and be gracious to you. The Lord look on you with favor and give you peace. Amen. Amen. You may be seated for the closing hymn. Thank you.